This is your podcast host, podcast of HR in the dark, Stephanie Lomax, and CEO and HR strategist for HR Pro for You. And of course, you know that the podcast is uh, the dark side of HR. We're talking about all the things that people don't typically like to talk about when it comes to human resources. And that's what I'm here to do. Thanks so much for joining uh, this evening. We are actually talking about how to fire an employee legally. So, you know, we're telling them to hit the road, Jack, but we're going to do it the legal, the legal way to make sure that as a small business, we are covered and have done our due diligence before doing so. So I'm sure that you all have come across or either, um, either come across or been a part of having to terminate employees. And um, having done it for the last 20 years myself, I can tell you, and I'm sure you can probably agree, that even when it is completely justified that they're being terminated, it's still very difficult to do because at the end of the day, somebody is losing their livelihood and they're gonna be without a job. And I know what that feels like. I'm sure you probably know what that feels like as well. And so there's definitely a compassion piece of it, but as business owners and small businesses, we also have to do what's in the best interest um, of our business. And so we recognize that there are clearly times that we need to just part ways with employees. But tonight I'm going to tell you the five things that you need to do when you are in the process of terminating an employee. Just five quick things. Um, we all know there's been quite a few very high profile terminations um, in the news here of late. And we know what type of PR that gets businesses when they're in the news and doing things. Now, I mean, obviously they recover, but certainly we don't want our small business um, out with a bad reputation because we did somebody incorrectly in the process of terminating them and we handled it incorrectly. So let's talk about these five things. Number one, you want to make sure that you have documentation and a business reason. Now, certainly there are plenty of states, Maryland being one of them, which is where I'm located, uh, where employment is at will. It means that an employee can terminate employment, they can quit employment with or without cause, with or without notice. And likewise, employers can terminate employment with or without cause and with or without notice. Certainly as a small business, and just, I mean, in general, you wanna give as much advance notice as you can if you're planning to for an employee if you are going to terminate uh, certainly the process of doing terminations for the most part you know they're effective immediate so um, that's not giving notice and sometimes employers will um, give pay in lieu of the notice not being given or under certain circumstances um, and even when an employee gives notice, depending upon their type of position, um, the employer may choose to exercise that termination immediately as opposed to allowing the employee to give notice. And that typically happens when you're in sales types of positions where you have access to books of business and things like that. But in generally speaking, most employers request two weeks notice if they're going to terminate or if they're going to resign. Um, but certainly when we're exercising terminations, that doesn't always come with notice. Uh, but we also need to make sure that we have documentation as to why we're terminating them if it's not for exercising employment at will, which I would prefer that employers don't lean on employment at will. If we've got a reason um, and we've got documentation, we need to explain that reason briefly, and I'll talk about that shortly. Um, and then we also need to um, make sure we have documentation to back that up. So that's number one, have documentation and have a business reason. Number two, uh, you want to meet them in person. I mean, you know, you're going to terminate somebody over the phone, you're going to send them an email, that's probably not too cool. So as uncomfortable as it can be, Certainly, we want to make sure that we have a face-to-face -face conversation with them as to why it is that we are terminating them or to exercise the termination. Number three, in that face-to-face -face meeting, you also want to have a witness. Um, that could be another manager. It could be the department manager. It could be someone else in the organization that would make business sense to have. And certainly, if you don't have in-house HR, but you have a consultant or you have legal counsel, they can certainly be on hand to also help you be a witness to that. Why do we need a witness? Because we want to make sure that what we tell the employee 
during the termination, which is not going to be expansive, getting ready to get that get to that in a second. But what we explain in the meeting is heard by somebody other than just the emotional employee who probably isn't hearing very clearly. Um, and us, you know, obviously as the business owner or the manager exercising termination, that things will get lost in the course of exercising the termination. So threes have a witness. Number four, do not be long-winded and stick to your reason. I have found that, it, again, completely uncomfortable, not fun to do, um, to have to go through this process with people. But what you don't want to do is to get into a lengthy conversation with them and then have yourself be open to maybe saying something incorrectly that's not the complete reason or that's a different reason as to why maybe there's more than one reason i don't know but what you want to do is stick to the reason that you're saying if you explain to them that they're being terminated because of performance we've got documentation um, to that we're going to explain obviously that's a business reason and then we're going to remain even after they left employment the reason still needs to be the same um, it can cost employers a lot of money changing uh, stories midstream as to why somebody is being terminated after they've left. So the documentation needs to back up what the reason is, and then we need to stick to that reason. So that's number four. And then lastly, you want to have a checklist in front of you. Why do we need a checklist? We want to make sure that we're going through all of the things that we need to say to exit the employee. Um, we want to make sure that we collect company property. We want to make sure that we gather passwords, um, if that's applicable. We want to also make sure that we uh, are getting access uh, turned off. We want to make sure that we're providing them with information in their termination letter. Um, in the event that they are benefit eligible, we want to make sure that we explain to them what happens to their benefits after they terminate. And let me say this, for employers that have 20 or more employees or live in a state that has miniature COBRA laws, you are required to provide them notice of COBRA continuation within 14 days of their termination. 14 days, okay? So that can end up racking up a lot of fines uh, if you don't do that in a timely manner and certainly if you terminating more than one person. So you want to make sure that you have that checklist just so you can remember, because again, it's not a comfortable situation, um, but you want to be thinking as clearly as possible. And the best way to do that is to have a list in front of you. All right. So just to recap, number one, when you're terminating an employee, you want to have documentation and business reason. Number two, you want to do it in person, face to face. Uh, number three, you want to have a witness. Number four, you don't want to be long-winded and you want to stick to the reason that you give them as to why they're terminating even after they've terminated. And then number five, lastly, you have that checklist in front of you to go through and make sure that you properly and legally close out the employee's uh, employment with you. That is this month's video podcast uh, it was short right <laughs> so i um, just wanted to give you those quick tidbits on how to terminate an employee legally next month uh september the 5th is when we will air again uh which is the first wednesday in september at nine o'clock p.m and we're going to be talking about the size matters yes size matters in business what we're talking about hr laws um based on the size of your business and which ones you need to be aware of. So I'm looking forward to seeing you uh, and being seen the first Wednesday in September for the podcast, HR in the Dark, where we expose the dark side of HR. Hope you guys have a wonderful rest of the month of August. I can't believe it's almost over, but it is. And um, I will see you guys next month. Take care. Bye-bye.